Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. New business will take us, or uh, let's see, yeah, new business. Uh, first resolution is to designate the location of post meeting notices of meetings. And I need a motion to approve the regular meetings. Is this for the regular meeting schedule? This is the posting. Posting location. Posting. Location of posting. This one. This one. Do we move? Do we try to turn the chairs up? Yeah, everything got moved around. Okay. Uh, it's 14 dash 1. 14 dash 1. Oh, right here in front of me. Okay. Um, do I read the <coughs> no, you just, just, you just can you can actually just move to adopt resolution fourteen dash one slash one. All right, motion to adopt resolution one slash four slash fourteen. There's so so I moved fourteen dash one dash one. Twenty fourteen. <laughs> Here, this one. Twenty fourteen dash one dash one. Uh, no. Yeah, this one. Okay. But the records show this is a motion to adopt resolution 2014-1-1. So All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Next item is the notice of regular means. And we just need a motion to adopt this document. Well, just, yeah, I, this one's not numbered, so why don't we just do it on the second Thursday of each month at 6 p.m. or immediately calling the pension board trustee. Okay. <coughs> All right, is there a second on that? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next item is the 2014 scheduled meeting, regular meeting schedule which corresponds to the second Thursday of every month. Motion to accept that. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. I didn't get the second on the second. Who's it, Stan? I moved it. I'll, yeah. I'll be I'll, guilty. Stan <laughs> seconds that. Stay with me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <Thanks and then. laughs> The next new business item is to make sure all directors fill out their conflict of interest disclosures. And you'll get it from Alex when he gets back. All right, that will take us to our legal update. It's all yours. Okay. Um, the, um, we need a motion tonight. Um, well, the Municipal Asset Management Company, which is the folks who have, have been doing your uh, lease purchase financing, um, are going to do the next lease purchase financing, and they need a bunch of paperwork done. We just got the paperwork yesterday or something, and, and I just saw it today for the first time. So <coughs> neither the Chief or I have, have had enough of an opportunity to go through it to make sure we're okay. You have a master lease, and this is an addition to that master lease. And and um, and so you're saying, well, what's the big deal? Well, they're having us state a whole bunch of things, and we want to make sure that everything we're stating is proper. And so what we're asking is that you pass a uh, motion um, to authorize um, uh, Mike and Len to go ahead and. Um, execute the Municipal Asset Management uh, Incorporated's Master Lease Agreement and other documents um, uh, as uh, presented by us or as amended by um, uh, us um, uh, sometime in the next 30 days between now and your next board meeting. And, um, uh, it, you know, based on approval from the Chief and from the Council. And the reason that we're doing it is because they just got here and, you know, do this sign off on stuff. We're not going to do that. So um, we, we recommend that this is the group we want to go with. They had, if you remember at our last meeting, they had the best uh, code and, and everything. And you are working with them already. We assume everything in there is okay. 
but I can only think of a few of these that I've ever signed without making a few changes. You know, that they've got some things that just aren't quite right and they have to straighten them out. So that's um, my recommendation that we just get a motion to authorize the president and the secretary to um, uh, go ahead and, and uh, execute these documents once they approve by the chief of You guys understand that? Yep. Okay. So. You're making that motion? No, wait, hang on before you do it. Is that, are you, you're good with that? Yep. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Do I need to restate? No, you can okay. just say so much. So moved. Is there a second? Because I wrote it down. Second? Case I'm oh, she okay. got it all. <laughs> it's, made, it's made and seconded. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that motion right. carries. And Lynn, you're going to be around. To, we, should, we expect to get this done by Tuesday or Wednesday at the latest. So you'll be around the next few days. Okay. He's you got to change his travel plans. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. <clears throat> Legal. All right. Um, uh, Chief is um, working on policies and procedures. He sent me a copy of one that you all would have gotten. And he can go into why he did what he did. I do want to one look at those, so I appreciate it him send them over. But I think they're really important that we do this, and this one in particular in light of what's going on in our neighboring district. So it's, it's uh, yeah, so it's back as a draft. Um, so um, I just want to encourage the board and the chief to continue with these policies and procedures. Um, this one's on, um, on financial issues and, the, and specifically on and this particular one is uh, credit card. So, um, I don't have anything further to say. I we got it through quickly. It seemed fine. I'll, if I got suggestions, I'll give them to the chief. But I do want to continue to have those uh, passed by me, number one, and number two, that we can um, uh, make sure that we put these things out for folks to read and be aware of. And, and, and it's well written. So. Um, another issue is the state um, dropped a a um, couple of early Christmas presents on a couple of our um, um, ambulance responders um, questioning uh, care in, a, in a one specific call. Um, the, um, uh, they're required to respond. We, you know, and, and of course they say it's immediate and it was two days before Christmas and so nothing was going to be immediate. Um, we've discussed it with and my firm has, and um, we're in contact with the state and we're moving forward with that. I, I really don't think that this is an issue that needs to rise to your level at this point. Um, Chief is working with the two individuals to get um, their statements, and uh, we're going to um, put together a, a statement to the state back, even though the uh, letters were directed to those two individuals. They worked for you, it was your call, and it's our documentation that is uh, uh, supporting that call. So uh, we're going to submit all that, their, state, their individual statements as well as um, our documentation. And I, I, I think it'll go away, but I just I wanted everybody to be aware it, it was something that came in for you to be aware of those things when they happen. So. Is there um, anything you'd like to report to the board regarding that? Matter? No, I, as uh, as I mentioned, um, or as uh, Richard mentioned, uh, I don't I don't anticipate either that it would uh, actually be uh, held as a valid complaint. Uh, but we are, you know, we have uh, looked at it very carefully, and uh, we feel that uh, the standard the care given met the standard of care. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And and it, um, if we get in the um, Anything, if it goes beyond this, we're going to have to, want to talk to you about that. And, uh, um, but I, I really think it's, um, I think it's motivated by other reasons than the standard care reasons. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> then um, there are two resolutions up there, I think three and four, um, like that. You should have sticky gum. Uh, yeah, the, the one you just had your hand on right below. Yeah, uh, we need to go ahead and do that. It's election time. Yeah. 
I just said, so uh, even though you're thinking, no, it's May, Richard, no, yeah, um, we have to go ahead and appoint a DEO. Uh, you're appointing Rhonda Davis, who did your last election, um, to be your DEO. Again, you got to go through the property list, you got to go through the voters list, you've got to, you know, organize all that stuff. It's um, fairly intensive. And um, um, while, well, you know, if you don't have an election, and the, there are three people, I think, uh, up, and if you don't have an election, um, then, and that would be if we had less than, than or equal to three candidates, um, then the election would be canceled. And what this, these documents do is, uh, uh, point around that and gives her the authority uh, because the, the dates hit between your board meetings to go ahead and cancel the election without having to go through a, a um, hiatus and before we cancel the election. Because if you don't, then we got to keep doing all the stuff. So this way the DEO goes, okay, I can cancel that, I don't have to do a lot of this work, and you don't have to go out of So um, obviously, from a budget standpoint, and the best way is not to have the election, but if people want to run for the board, there are three seats up and there are four of your seats. So. Okay, so do we need a motion to appoint Rhonda Davis? Yeah, as the, one of those does that. I can't remember which is which, so I'm going to come on. Yeah, okay, that one, yeah, that one everybody just signs. This is the resolution, so if you just have somebody job number four. Okay. All right, I'd entertain a motion to adopt resolution 1 14 4. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. All right. And then, um, and then we just need a signature on that other one if, if the entire board would just sign. Okay. And that just does the same thing with Rhonda and gives me the authority to do it. And then she has, it's her oath of office, which she has to also sign. So I think that's it for me. If you don't need me any longer, I'm do you want to talk about the other trial that was thrown out? I should, and I brought a copy of the order. That's a good point. Um, as board member, uh, three board members um, plus Annie Eigel and yours truly were all subpoenaed to be uh, witnesses at the uh, Dolan versus Cole trial. Um, we did get um, uh, a. I also, an early Christmas present, when the uh, um, uh, Judge Zenzik uh, went ahead and, and granted a motion for summary judgment. Summary judgment is an opportunity for one side or the other to uh, file um, a uh, request that the court look at the law surrounding the undisputed facts of the case. And if those undisputed facts allow the judge to dispose of the case, then summary judgment is issued. It's extraordinary relief. It's often not given, even in cases where many people think it should be. Um, uh, it was given in this case. Um, uh, I have read it. Uh, it went through the entire background of the facts. Um, you, have, you have a copy of this. Yes. Right? I think it was so you, um, in the district, there are copies of this uh, um, uh, order, but basically the court goes through the major allegations of, that were in front of him and, and found some things for uh, uh, Dolan, but he found uh, enough things for Cole that said there really is an, an, um, an arguable issue here, and therefore the case is over. And so the case was dismissed. Um, uh, that's what happens if defense brings a motion for summary judgment and is successful in the case of Sometimes you get an uh, a, uh, answer from the judge, which is a partial summary judgment, and he gets rid of certain parts of the case. But in this case, in this instance, he, he went ahead and got rid of the entire case. So. 
So it's it's over, done with. Um, uh, I did get an email uh, from Cole's attorneys thanking the district um, for their cooperation and help, um, and um, and I did get one from Bob Cole saying that it was a huge relief for him for the end of 2015 and early 2014. So he was he was. And who wouldn't be? If you're being sued, it's you know never any fun. So, you know, so that that's it. I don't know if you have any questions. It's over with, and uh, um, so uh, I, I think um, you know if there are any other um, uh, claims that might be forthcoming, I'm not aware of them. But I think this would be another, so. okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of long, over a year, but some of them, we got enough. Right. Anything else, Mike, that I forgot? I don't think so. Any questions for Good. Okay. Well, I'll see you next month, because I'll be back, because we do have one question about the nature of the election. So I'll be back with at least that one resolution for you next month. Okay. Okay? All right. Doing a good job, guys. Cause <coughs> keep it up. Thank, Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, next item is to review the December 12th, 2013 regular meeting minutes. to approve the minutes as presented. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that'll take us to financial matters. You have, uh, you have before you the financial report for December 2013. Um, read, remind me, these are the unaudited sort of unofficial figures, is that right? That is correct. We'll have, yeah. we'll have numerous uh, adjustments so, in it. Are there further adjustments that will need to be made? Yes. Okay. So it's it's basically uh, just. But a in any event, uh, the total expenses for the month were one hundred eighty-seven thousand one hundred sixteen dollars, and I move those expenses be approved. <coughs> Your second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Next item. Uh, that's all I have. Okay. And we do have the attached summary income statement to review. That's right. All right. Yeah. Financial statements, the uh, usual ones are attached. This shows, uh, you know, the, the results for the entire year. Uh, but again, there will be some uh, adjustments that will have to be made. Okay. All right. Any questions on financial matters? Uh, fire chief report. Okay, uh, December was a fairly quiet uh, month for most of the activity of the district. Uh, you know, as as is often the case, we did didn't do much in the way of training. Uh, pretty much uh, just uh, uh, we're in you know basically a quick kind of December mode for, as it were. Um, however, we did uh, see an up, uptick in the. Uh, uh, calls during the month, particularly when we got into that cold spell uh, during the month. We ended up with uh, 66 calls for the month. Uh, the first half of the month started off relatively quiet, but then we ended up with uh, uh, two chimney fires, or three chimney fires, uh, two house fires, uh, one car fire, um, and quite a few, uh, certain, there were three service calls to broken pipes, and uh, quite a few car accidents caused uh, by the icy conditions. So 
Fortunately, uh, even with all the, the fires that we did have, uh, fire loss for the month was only $6,800. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, most of that occurred just in the and actually in the, uh, the one car fire, which was a loss. Um, car fires generally are once they start burning. So uh, we were able to keep the loss of uh, structure fires down to a, uh, quite a minimum amount. Um, Response times, uh, we're averaging uh, 8 minutes and 21 seconds, uh, which again is a, about par for uh, what we've been doing for the year. Uh, the only other issues uh, that uh, we have going on, obviously, uh, the Type 3 engines. Uh, we did just receive the financing documents, as was discussed by uh, Richard Toussaint. So we uh, hopefully we'll get those uh, finished up. And once uh, everything is signed with that, then uh, we anticipate uh, being able to pick up those engines within about a week after that. Um, we did get uh, tender bids. Uh, however, uh, we're still um, looking those tender bids over. Uh, and we actually have, uh, we're expecting uh, two additional bids coming in tomorrow, uh, which was the deadline on that. And um, we'll be uh, reviewing those early next week and hopefully uh, be able to recommend a, um, an award on those uh, you know, sometime uh, by next week. Uh, as I mentioned in the email earlier, uh, we, um, I would like to recommend that we hold a special meeting just to uh, award that, uh, that bid to, for the tenders, uh, given that we anticipate a nine month time, uh, period to deliver them. And so obviously the sooner that we uh, sign the contract on those, the sooner that uh, they'll go into production. Uh, the other thing that we had uh, with the apparatus, we uh, we had anticipated uh, getting um, the repair bids for 431 uh, that slid off the, the on the um, icy roads and slid into the ditch uh, much earlier. However, it uh, it took quite a while. Uh, they were on uh, Christmas mode as well. There, uh, in addition to having um, the flu go through the factory and shut it down for a week. Um, anyway, they, they came in with a, a bid for $18,033 to repair the cab of the engine, uh, or $25,676 to uh, repair, in addition, the um, uh, slight tweaking of the body in addition to the cab, uh, which obviously was uh, quite a bit more than the, than the preliminary estimate. That, uh, that they'd given us. Uh, basically, um, there was some separation of the body in the cab, and um, you know they're they're going to have to go in and re-weld uh, some of some of that. Um, my recommendation is that we at least redo the repairs on the cab, uh, which will get it back into a safe operation. Uh, the repairs on the body are, I think, uh, less important, and um, you know would are, are mainly cosmetic. Will probably uh, or could impact uh, the resale value of the, of the apparatus, but uh, are not going to impact the function of the, of the apparatus. And that's about it for this. Mike, I have a question on that. Okay, go ahead. Uh, is any of that covered by our insurance? We had, uh, we were waiting to get the, the quotes on that before submitting it to the insurance. Uh, primarily because uh, you know every time that uh, we submit some uh, a claim for insurance, it uh, ends up increasing our insurance rates pretty dramatically. Uh, currently, I believe we're at about forty-nine thousand dollars a year for insurance on the apparatus, uh, and uh, we anticipate that uh, you know we would uh, likely see an increase again from this. So. Um, Unfortunately, I, you know, if it were a situation where we were looking at, you know, a five thousand dollar repair, I would say, you know, just would just do it out of pocket. Uh, here, we're we're into that kind of line where, you know, we can go ahead and run it through insurance. I would anticipate that over the next couple of years, our insurance rates would increase as a result of that. Um, so. Uh, so it's your recommendation that we're going to just pay for it ourselves? I would say at this point that would probably be 
I, you know, it, it's really a, it's really kind of right in the middle, if you ask me, on whether we should uh, run that through insurance or go ahead and pay for it. Is it possible to find out by how much our insurance rates would increase? We, we can certainly we talk to them. That. I don't know that they'll give us a firm answer on that, but we can certainly check with that on, on that. Um, and we have, uh, we've had, unfortunately, both in our workers' compensation insurance and in our apparatus insurance, we don't have good histories in either one. And, um, you know, that's why, you know, currently between the two of those, uh, we're paying over $100,000 a year in insurance annually, uh, which, you know, is something we've got to get under control. Um, you know, and again, if it were, you know, when we were originally expecting this to be between five and 10000 you know, that was, uh, that was something clearly that we'd want to just go ahead and pay for. Um, you know, here, I think we're going to have to see what kind of impact it's going to have and make that decision. Okay. Any more comments, Al? There's a comment. No, I'm good. There's a comment from the floor. Do we have a deductible on that on those claims? There is. Um, Five thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you know, even if we ran that through, you know, we're, we're still five thousand out of pocket regardless. And engine four thirty one will be marketed once the uh, new ones come in. Is that true? Um, we had uh, initially planned on uh, keeping that particular <coughs> engine for uh, a few more years. Um, we may want to look at uh, unloading it sooner um, now because of this. Uh, From the standpoint of resale, is it worth it, worth it to incur the full expense to fix it? I'd ask you, Tim, what's your opinion on that? As soon as I see, I mean, if I was a buyer personally, as soon as you see any kind of rippling body damage, it just raises a red flag and you immediately know, oh, been in an accident yeah. or it wasn't properly repaired, to me that would be something I would either step back from or try to find out more about it and why you didn't go to the, you know, the full boat to the repair or that would be where I would stand with it if I was looking from the other side. I think, thanks. I think my tendency would be to go for the full repair and check with the insurance agent and see how that might have adverse impact and make a decision. I, I, I like that approach. Yeah, I, I agree. Absolutely. Okay. Go ahead. Do you think if, if you report it to the insurance company, we paid 5000 do you think the rates would go up another 20000 which would be the 25000 for the full repair? Or? I, I would uh, say that over the course of the next few years, we'll end up paying it off you know, through the insurance. I mean, that, that's generally what happens. <coughs> They, we had a fairly sizable, um, you know, uh, expense that ran through insurance about right about when I got here yeah. from damage just before I started. <coughs> and, uh, you know, that that's what they're looking at is frequency of claims and, and how much they're spending. Typically. All right. Well, I think you've got a good direction, man. I'll, I'll see. I'll see if I can get a, uh, an idea from what that impact will be. Thank you. All right. Did you have anything else? Nope. That's all I have. Okay. Any questions for the chief? Nope. Good. Okay. Uh, the next old business item I have is financial policy and procedures. Okay. And uh, I did uh, send you around an email today with uh, one piece of that. Um, however. Uh, because we're just getting started and we want more time uh, both for you and for uh, our legal counsel to review that. I recommend that uh, we just go ahead and look at that and uh, uh, you know, have, I'll probably be getting parts of that to you periodically over the next few weeks and hopefully uh, have most of that put together uh, by the next meeting. Um, uh, but uh, I wanted that to start with uh, looking at the credit card policy because obviously that was uh, one of the major things that uh, went very wrong over at Intercanada. Uh, so I ask you to really take a look at that and um, you know, see if, if you're comfortable with the, 
controls that uh, I'm recommending we put in place on that. The majority of those controls are already in place. It's really describing what we're doing. There are just one or two things that I'm recommending that we add to that just to ensure that there's more oversight. Uh, specifically, that um, you know, while you know, uh, both Marie and I review the credit card statements every month, I'd also recommend that the treasurer also look at that itemized uh, statement each month uh, as well, just to avoid the obvious problem that they had when their treasurer was unaware of what they were spending uh, funds on. Are we good to that? Yes. Okay, absolutely. All right. Um, the last item was collections committee. And we have not uh, started that at this point. I, nothing happens in December. <laughs> no, we did that. We knew that. <laughs> okay. Uh, any other new business? Okay, any citizens issues? Uh, how about a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.